Okay, the idea came from NASA's two rovers they sent to Mars in 2004, Spirit and Opportunity. This is a picture of Spirit. Wireless security robots that could be used for bomb disarming and for security. And industrial robotic arms. And I'm going to tell you about the functions of the robot. The arm has five degrees of freedom and the gripper. And there's the uh, four-wheel rover base, which can move at three feet per second. And then the camera's pan and tilt. There's wireless control from the uh, radios there. And you can control and view, view the robot through the internet from anywhere. As you hit the buttons on the joystick, they show up in the dialog. We originally wanted to program it in Java so that it could go cross-platform. Windows, Linux, Mac, Solaris, whatever. However, Java does not have correct software just yet to get it to work. So that's another reason why I chose C Sharp. Most of the code is platform independent. Or, yeah, independent. Doesn't matter. The only thing that relies on Windows is the video. The wireless protocol we are using to talk from the rover to the computer is known as Zigbee. Zigbee is a wireless networking standard that works off of uh, 2.4 gigahertz, just like your cordless phones in your house. It has about 100 meters indoors, 300 meters outdoors uh, range. And uh, this right here, this is the Zigbee module on the Arduino microcontroller receives commands from this module right here. This is the video. It's NTSC at uh, 180 lines. And as you can see, what my partner is doing is he's just manipulating the servos like this. This little uh, slider here is there to control the time. It's in milliseconds. So if we slide this all the way up, it's really slow. It'll take five seconds to move the servo, no matter how far it has to move. And the pulse width here is just for how much you want to move it each time. And that's just how much you want to move it each time. Each one is controllable to move the camera. For the arm, you have your base options. Rotate base. Move the arm up. Now we'll demonstrate the rover. Move forward. Alright, move backwards. Alright, go left. Right. Forward. Back. The rover can move up to 36 inches per second. Uh, four motors are controlled by the L293D motor controller, which is this little black chip right here. This is a switching regulator, which all it does is takes the voltage off these two batteries and converts it down to the five volts to run this chip. And this regulator here is just a low dropout regulator. All it does is takes the voltage off these turns it to 12 volts so that we can run the Arduino microcontroller off of it. Okay, the microcontroller. The microcontroller that we have decided to use 
is called the Arduino. That's the whole platform. It's open source and it uses Atmel's Atmega 168 microprocessor. Okay, I'm gonna talk about some of the things I want to hear on. First is the servos. Servos are like motors, except instead of driving them with just a plain old voltage, you supply the power and uh, pulses to actually tell it where to go. So you have a certain amount of control and uh, they also have error detection on them as well. And the arm, the arm comes with a pre-built uh, SSC32 servo controller. That's pre-programmed. That's there, and that's connected to the computer either via serial or USB to serial. And the camera, the camera is a wireless uh, GMK camera. Transmits color at NTSC at uh, 380 lines. It has a 100 meter range and. Uh, we had to use a uh, mini TV tuner. It's over there. Well, that's the radio receiver for the camera. And that's hooked up to this via composite, which is in the computer. All right, uh, demonstrate the networking now. Okay, to figure out your IP address. All you have to do is open up a, a console window and type ipconfig and enter. And then it will come back with your IP, which in this case is 142, 204, 139, 100. It says we can make it. Uh, same commands. Networking, there are three modes standalone, which is just everything connected to the computer, no networking. Then the server, where you listen for clients and they send commands. You can send commands too, though. The server connect on the robot. And there's client mode where you just send commands, with nothing connected. Oh, and video. Video would be sent at about 10 frames per second. That's to reduce lag. This is TCP, and you don't want to send too much data. Controller, we already showed it off. You can control it. the robot here with the forms or with that. The user can adjust pulse width, time, speeds, anything they want. The software will check when you're adding pulse width so that you don't go too far. You can't damage there. And again, uh, you can also record commands. So, what you do is you can sit, uh, rotate, for example. We'll hit rotate twice, then we'll move the arm up, then we'll move it down, and then you can close this. Place it. Set the file you want. And it'll just do it automatically for you. I'll do the wrap up. Okay, viability. This product is viable. The arm is viable for any uh, industrial robotics. Uh, it's just a scaled down version. All you'd have to do is spend the millions of dollars and get a good arm, but they're all controlled by servos. It's the same principle. You could just take our software and hook it up and it would work. Future developments, audio support for the camera. Right now the software only had those video. Can do audio, but sending it through the internet, we didn't get to that. Multiple cameras. Again, it would be nice to have a camera track a rover, a couple tracking their arm, instead of just the one. Um, true internet access, because right now you need the program to run it. If it was, if you could just connect through the wireless and connect the rover, you'd get rid of the range restrictions. You could run it through a web page, better interface. And then, of course, there would be the option of third radio, so that we could finally mount the arm onto the base. But that's that's optional. You don't have to get contact information.